Hello, and welcome to Kindred. We're so glad you're here. My name is Ty, and I'm the worship leader. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want you to know that no matter what your faith journey looks like, no matter what your background is, you are welcome here at Kindred. If you are new, click connect in the video description below, and we can answer any questions that you may have and help you find your place in our community. Also, if you'd like to see this week's announcements, you can click announcements below and we'll keep you up to speed on all the many things we've got going on. Finally, if you'd like to give to Kindred today, just click give in the video description below because we're able to provide all of our ministries for free because of generous donors like you. So thank you for participating in financial generosity. Once again, we're so glad you're here and we hope you enjoy this service.
the shining river soon our pilgrimage will see soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of Well, hello and welcome to Worship. It's good to be with you. If I haven't met you before, my name is Daniel. I'm the pastor here. If this is your first time to tune in with us at Kindred, we're especially glad that you have joined us. Uh, today we have a special treat. Our friend Minoka Yance is here to preach for us. Uh, if you've been around the Kindred community for much time, you know Minoka. Uh, but if you don't know Minoka, uh, she is a, an active member and, and leader uh, here at Kindred. Um, she has a Master's of Divinity from Duke Divinity School, and she actually works on staff at Duke Divinity School now. Now, and she very graciously uh, offers her time and, and pastoral talents uh, to us. So we're always glad when Minoka could come and, uh, and preach for us. Before we hear from her, uh, our scripture reading for today comes from Revelation. Uh, we're going to look at a, a few verses in chapter 21 and then the beginning of Revelation chapter 22. Uh, so it says this. Uh, the angel took me in a spirit-inspired trance to a great high mountain, and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I didn't see a temple in the city, because its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city doesn't need the sun or the moon to shine on it, because God's glory is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light. And the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is vile and deceitful, but only those who are registered in the Lamb's scroll of life. Uh, and then it continues. Uh, then the angel showed me the river of life-giving water shining like crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river is the tree of life, which produces 12 crops of fruit, bearing, each, bearing its fruit each month. The, the tree's leaves are for the healing of the nations. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and His servants will worship Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They won't need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will shine on them, and they will rule forever and always. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's listen now as Minoka continues our sermon series called Plot Twist. I have a deep love for the mountains. Maybe it's because I'm a person who's vertically challenged, so mountains are an opportunity to see what my height won't allow me to. And every chance that I can, I try to be on top of a mountain. I've done it in South Africa, in Alaska, in Sri Lanka, just to name a few. But my favorite mountains are always the Blue Ridge Mountains. My stance softens when I cross the Virginia-North Carolina line and I begin to see the mountains that I grew up in. 
For me, the mountains have blown quietness into my life when it has felt the most chaotic. Their grandeur can't help but ask you to see the wisdom within their big, huge structures. They have the ability to reflect life back to you. Standing on top of a tall mountain, I could see parts of my hometown and the ways that I was connected to people in places that I couldn't see when I was on the ground. And maybe most importantly, mountains have the ability to reorient the hierarchy of creation when we get, we as humans, get too big for our britches. It's a reminder that creation is not about us, but about God, the God who created the mountains and called them good. Now, just as a reminder, for those that have been following along the last couple of weeks, we've been in a sermon series about the book of Revelations. And in this book of Revelations, the Roman Caesar has exiled the author of Revelation, John, for his refusal to worship Caesar. In the book of Revelation, hope bursts forth from God's revelation to a person enduring political persecution. The unveiling of God's plan to, to John to see these visions demonstrates that no oppression, pain, fear, or isolation can block God's communion with us. Now, in today's text from Revelations, we're taken up to the mountain to be in communion and to see God's vision. John is given a vision of a God whose compassion is for all peoples. The bulk of the text for this week is a description of the new heaven and the new earth. John describes a vision of the holy city of Jerusalem coming from heaven. And as we read, it is a lot to do with nature and a little to do with the golden streets that many movies describe heaven to be. The view of the future offered by John is both beautiful and foreboding. John intentionally notes being on top of the mountain in order to see the vision from God. We are reading from this high vantage point and seeing the bigger picture of creation. Our world may be in an utter tailspin right now, but a mountain perspective is a type of perspective we as Christians are to have on our own lives and on the world. As Christians, we can see the love of God because we know the end of the story. That's the plot twist that we keep talking about here in the book of Revelation. When we see and look out from the mountain, we do not merely see despair and destruction, but also hope. The vision described in Revelations 21 and 22 are full of ways that we can interpret how we see our world today. Rivers become places of beauty and not barriers. In this semi-arid area of the Mediterranean, water is really important. Revelations' vision of God's life-giving waters that we read today nourishes who we are and gives hope for the future. Water nourishes in this passage just as it nourishes in our baptisms. The presence of the river of the water of life is a way of saying that the power that sustains life is unending and uncontainable. The tree of life that we read about today is no longer tempting humanity as it once did in Genesis, but becomes a source of healing and abundance. In contrast to the toxic sorcery of Babylon, God's tree of life gives medicine for the world. How can we give thanks for the healing sources that God has provided to our world today? And lastly, this vision forecasts lives that are lighted by God's everlasting light. John is seeing the light that is always and everywhere to the point that there's no more darkness. This may be a vision of the future, but I bet if we try hard enough, we can see how our own lives have been lighted by God's everlasting light now. One of the most interesting things that I find about this particular vision is how God will interact with the new Jerusalem or the new world in the future. We see in the latter half of today's passage a vision of a different church than what had once been. God isn't stuck in a temple anymore, but is everywhere. God's new Jerusalem is not de demarcated by exclusive borders, but it is one in which God's self is the dwelling place. The city itself signifies the holy of holies. God is immediately, 
fully present to shape community life. Now you see, the Jerusalem of old, the temple was a really big deal. It was a place to see and know God, and to be able to be given access to the inners of that temple was a really big deal because they believed that that's where God was. But in this new revelation, the permanence in the life of a person of faith is now in God and not a building. As we think about this particular vision and what it means for our lives as the church and as Christians today, I ask you, do you live with a mountaintop perspective? Not a mountaintop moment that we may have heard or even felt, not something that will eventually end, like a really good mission trip or that great meal that you had last weekend, but a mountaintop perspective, a way of seeing the world that is permanent. Do we live into God's provision of perspective so that we can live in the big picture hope of our risen Jesus? Or are we stuck in ground level thinking? To have faith in God's provision of perspective is not to dismiss the world or regard it as something that doesn't need attention, but it is to live as if we actually believe that we know the end of this story. How God decides to create the future does not remove the need to nurture God's creation in the present. We may be peoples that live as evidence of God's way on this earth and the next. As I reflect on my own life, as short as it's been, when it gets harder, it's also been opportunities for it to be holier. When I can't see the end of the storm, it makes me want to hold on to Jesus just a little bit tighter. And that's because Jesus equals the big picture. Ground level thinking has to contend with obstacles and barriers. To see clearer, we must rise higher. May we be a church that rises higher collectively and together, not to get away from the earth and its problems, but to gain perspective and maybe a different angle of vision, a vision filled with hoping, sharing that we understand the end of the story and living as we actually believe it. May the Lord be each of our everlasting light. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your provision of perspective. The ways that you granted the gift of vision to John high on top of that mountain and the way that you help us to have that vision in our daily lives. Let us be bearers of that everlasting light to the places and spaces where we find ourselves after here. Help us to always know that you love us so that we may then shine that light to the world. Thank you for the ways that you have been in our lives and you help us in our storms and in our joyous moments. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minoka, for that good word. Uh, a couple quick things here before we go, friends. Uh, the first is that uh, if you're new to Kindred, I would love to be able to connect with you, but I need your contact information. So if you click the link that's called Connect uh, in the video description or the podcast description here, uh, I'll reach out to you this week. would love to say hey and um, uh, learn about your story and answer any questions that you might have about Kindred Church. Uh, also, if you're local, uh, two things to tell you about. One, we would love to see you in in-person worship. You can get on our website. It's Kindred nc.church. You can find out the details about uh, how to join us in person on Sunday morning. Uh, also, um, this afternoon, uh, so today is uh, Sunday, May 22nd, this afternoon uh, from 3 to 5 p.m., a, a group of us from Kindred are going to be hanging out at High Wire Brewery in downtown Durham. You can get the details uh, about this event uh, linked in our uh, video description or podcast description here. We would love to see you. It's a perfect time to come out. If you're new to the Kindred community, you can uh, meet some other folks uh, in our community. If you're not new to the Kindred community, it's also a good time to reconnect with uh, old friends and, and make some new friends as well. So we'd love to see you this afternoon at High Wire Brewery. Uh, finally, um, be sure to check the newsletter that's linked in the video description or the podcast description uh, for all the latest updates and uh, ways to get involved with our community. Uh, however you choose to connect, we're, we're so glad that you're a uh, part of what we're doing here at Kindred Church. Well, friends, with that, I uh, hope you have a great week. May the peace of Christ be with you.